Uh, good morning, my name is Stephen Curry. I'll just pause for a second while the cognoscenti absorb the very clever font joke that I have on my first slide. Before that turns to anger at their realisation that I've used the font Comic Sans. Uh, I think I'm here uh, initially because of uh, boxes like this that I used to see on grant applications. I'm a working scientist. I depend on the research councils a lot of money, and they used to ask about this sort of stuff uh, when I was trying to get on with the busy business of actually doing science. And like many working scientists, I used to not take this very seriously. Uh, it was a sort of add-on. Uh, I got the message from the research councils that actually they didn't take it very seriously because they never really put a lot of money behind it. And I used to sort of write down, oh, I'll go and talk to a couple of schools, and if there's a sort of science day at the university, I'll probably <coughs> help out with that. I didn't really think about it much more than that. But uh, about sort of 2007, 2008, I gradually became aware of the scientific blogosphere and it did strike me that uh, starting a scientific blog might be a good way to fulfill this duty. I did have a slightly guilty conscience that I wasn't really fulfilling my duty to the taxpayer by uh, engaging uh, more actively with the public about the science that, that I did using their money. So um, I hummed and had quite a bit. Uh, blogging has a mixed reputation, shall we say. Uh, among uh, many people. It's seen in academic circles often still is a bit as a sort of frivolous uh, waste of time. Um, there were also concerns I had about, uh, you know, what would I write about? Would I be able to s sustain it? Uh, and But uh, I sort of got in involved initially just commenting on other people's blogs and then eventually decided to uh, take the plunge myself, which I did in 2008 while laying my cards very clearly on the table. I found that once you sort of start and take the plunge and sort of have a little bit of courage in order to sort of put yourself out there in the public domain, um, you, it actually then becomes quite difficult to shut you up. So um, when people like Simon Jenkins uh, get out their quill and start to write on subjects of which they know very little, among them including science, uh, I felt motivated and actually uh, had enough sort of self-confidence to, with my colleague Bill Hannage at Imperial to sort of write a rebuttal. And um, I don't know how much impact um, saying in public, oh no, we're not, uh, has, but it, it certainly felt good. And um, I have noticed that his scientific output has dropped in the meantime, but uh, I'll leave it others to judge on the particular impact of that. <laughs> If you are going to speak out and get into blogging, it does help actually if you can write. Um, I, I didn't think actually that I could write. You know, 20 odd years as an academic, I've written lots of papers, but you know, we know, all know the dry style that academic papers are written in. But I was kind of surprised and relatively pleased to discover that you know, I did have a certain way with words. I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but uh, so the, some of the blog posts that I've written have been included in uh, internationally curated collections of the best science blogging for the last uh, three years. So that kind of helps boost your self-confidence. Blogging is very much about a networking thing, and although there are an awful lot of very nasty people out there in the blogosphere, um, an awful lot of other people are actually quite nice, and you do get a lot of positive feedback um, from it, not just on your writing, but on the issues that you talk about. So that can lead to other uh, opportunities. And although also some people like to put about the rumour, you know, journalists such as Andrew Marr, I don't know why the bloggers put his nose so out of joint, I don't know what they did, but uh, he seems to think that bloggers are mostly spotty, girlfriendless young men who sit in their pyjamas banging away at their keyboards. Uh, <laughs> but in actual fact, in actual fact, uh, I find the opposite is true, and that banging away at my keyboard has actually taken me uh, out of my office and actually out into the streets. And it was through blogging and the networking, I got uh, sort of caught up in the libel reform campaign uh, initiated, I think sparked in part by the case involving Simon Singh, who was sued by the British Chiropractic Association for something that he wrote in The Guardian that now turns out to be true. And um, uh, that sort of uh, getting involved in that campaign, I wrote blogs about it. I actually went along to the High Court a couple of times. Turns out you can go in free. Who knew? So, and it's actually uh, very good entertainment, but it also is a way of making you think a bit more about many of the diverse issues. And I think this came out in some of the comments in the first panel. You know, there are many varied ways in which scientists can get involved uh, in the wider society. And writing about your research is one way, but actually libel reform is a very important method because it's often used by many companies to silence critics. And it's a particular problem in the, in the area of public health. And actually Simon Singh in this picture will be presenting 
uh, evidence to the Select Committee in Parliament later this afternoon who are considering draft legislation which uh, has come about in the new administration, I think in no small part, as Alan Rusbridger noted, to the activities of uh, scientists who were up in arms about this issue. Another variation, it's important to talk to the, the next generation of uh, citizens, some of them who will become scientists, but many of them will just become citizens who are having to grapple with an increasingly technological world. I had talked about going into schools. I've done a little bit of that, but mostly just in my kids' schools. Uh, but this is a fantastic sort of online opportunity to talk directly to uh, school students around the country. It's all done online. It's a sort of two-week competition modelled on a popular TV series. Uh, it's not quite as brutal as the uh, television variant, uh, but it is very good because it places all the power in the hands of the children who get to vote for their favourite scientists, judging how well they answer any and every question that the children are allowed to put to us. So I spent an intensive two weeks, actually this time last year, uh, doing in this and was uh, lucky enough to emerge victorious. <laughs> the getting out into the world and thinking about uh, impacts and more, uh, of course we had a change of administration last year and again sort of through contacts picked up uh, in the sort of blogosphere with The Guardian and that. Uh, when Vince Cable made an absolutely atrocious speech about the so-called lack of excellence in British science, um, I co-wrote a piece with Evan Harris, who was an MP at the time. Unfortunately, he's no longer an MP, but we'll see if we can remedy that. Uh, uh, sort of castigating him. And uh, the same speech uh, also motivated a colleague of mine, Dr. Jenny Rowan, to sort of kick-start the Sciences Vital campaign. And around her nucleated a very small group of people who really pushed the campaign. We had 42 days to fight off the threat of cuts. We mobilized celebrities. We mobilized a petition of 35,000 signatures, presented a petition to uh, 10 Downing Street, had FaceTime with David Willits uh, to talk about it. We had a noisy demonstration right outside the Treasury offices, which I know for a fact was uh, overheard by Danny Alexander, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury. And um, no, I'm not going to claim that the campaign um, was solely responsible for the relatively beneficial settlement that we got to the Comprehensive Spending Review. There were many other groups uh, very vocal, both publicly and privately. But what was great about this was the way in which we could use blogging and Twitter and Facebook to mobilize a truly grassroots um, reaction to what was uh, then a very serious situation. The situation is still serious, but I think it's not as bad as it might otherwise have been. And that's how it, in the, in the streets, what about my research? Does blogging actually help my research? I'm not entirely sure about that. I think the main benefit I've got is actually the contact I've had with the public through it. And uh, particularly, actually, I felt this during talking to the kids in the online competition. Exposure to their, their freshness and their optimism, their idealism, and what they really wanted scientists and felt that scientists ought to be able to do to you know, make the world a better place was really terribly refreshing for a sort of jaded uh, old cynic like me. And that kind of helps me to sort of uh, think a bit more deeply about the particular science that I do and whether that's actually you know, scientifically going to impact uh, the, the problems that you know, our society faces. Uh, it also impacts uh, on my teaching. Um, I spoke up at a staff meeting recently, uh, sort of arguing that on our biology and biochemistry degree programs, we needed to insist upon A-level maths among our entering students. Uh, many of my staff colleagues disagreed. I took the matter to the blogosphere and wrote a blog post about it. Uh, I got massive response. Turns out everybody's got an opinion on maths. Uh, but it was a very interesting and actually constructive discussion, and it, it sort of changed my view on the subject. I've been invited to write an article from the Times Higher Education uh, sort of enlarging on this, so I've had an opportunity to contribute to a national debate, and I think it probably played no small part in my recent appointment as Director of Undergraduate Studies in my department, where I think I will be uh, required to put my money where my <laughs> mouth is. Okay, so uh, I'm back at my grant application form. Uh, you're no longer asking directly for um, public engagement. We have to fill in some information on pathways to impact. The last time I did this, uh, I had little trouble actually finding things to say. I, I didn't hold back about the blogging that I do, about my involvement in Science is Vital. I kind of hope that will actually stir at least a bit of sympathy among the peer reviewers who will look at it, but um, I won't know the final outcome until the end of this month. I will leave you just with a few questions that I won't uh, go into any detail about, but perhaps there are points we can come back to in the discussion.